Hello there and welcome to Printed Props Workshop. This is going to be the first proper long video that I have on my channel, so uh, thank you for tuning in and uh, please bear with me. Um, I am still learning this whole YouTube thing, but in today's video we're going to be building a set of Ahsoka Tano lightsabers for a customer's order on Etsy. It's the new style of saber that I haven't previously done before through my store, so I figured it would be a fun video to do to go through my process of not only printing, but painting and also assembling the sabers to the finished product. So stick around and we can get to it. So we're out here to do a set of Ahsoka Sabres for a customer's order. I figured I would just go through quickly what my process is when I'm actually doing some of these. So as you can see, I've got four baskets in front of me here, which is basically all of the components of the Sabre that I've broken into the separate colors. So for example, we've got the, this basket is for the pieces of the gold. This basket is for the pieces of the silver. This basket is for the pieces that are dark silver or dark grey and this basket is for the pieces that are black. Then obviously we've got the two hilts here. So one would be silver, one would be dark silver and then I've got my classic uh, painting table that's seen better days and um, my spools. But pretty much the spools are what I use for painting onto because it's easier in general than um, painting straight onto the table and it just gives me a use for the plastic spools after I've used them because otherwise they're just going to get thrown away without any further any further use so to that end I'm going to start getting these things primed up with uh, some of this the Rust-Oleum primer okay so that's pretty much side one of all of the pieces primed the primer isn't really necessary in the case of what I'm doing because I used a lot of um, rattle can paints that are paint and primer, but I always like to put the primer on anyway, simply because of the fact that it tends to even the colors out a little bit better. Because if you're printing in multiple different filament colors, which obviously I wasn't in this case, I was printing it all in black, but if you're printing in multiple different filament colors, there is a good chance that when you actually use the paint and primer, it's gonna have a slightly different shade depending upon the filament color. So by using a simple rattle can primer beforehand, you can even out the color and get a, get a proper balance across the entire thing. So for an extra five bucks, it's just worth investing in a, in a can of primer just so that you can make sure that everything looks right when you get it printed out especially if you're using filament scraps like inevitably everyone ends up doing at some point and just in case anyone's wondering um i'm pretty hardcore this morning it's uh it's not warm but we've got orders to do so our next step is to start the actual painting process so the primer is dry and our paint that we're going to be using is this one Rust-Oleum Chrome. So 
let's get going with it. Okay, so first coat is on. And I have to say, for the first coat, it's taken really, really well. I don't usually have something that smooth right off the get-go, so I'm kind of liking that. Of course, we're dealing with massively changeable weather out here. Five minutes ago it was snowing, now it's clear and then it'll uh, probably be snowing again soon. So, you have to fit it around what's going on at the moment. Next stage is the gold sections. So these are being done with Rust-Oleum Bright Coat Metallic Finish Gold. So we'll see how those look in a moment. So here's the first coat of the gold finished. Again, it looks amazing. I can't complain at all. It's a beautiful finish to it, even after one coat. So, on to the next one, which will be the dark grey. There we go. So, the first coat of the charcoal is on. It's a very high gloss, so it's still going to have a lot of sheen to it anyway. And I will be hitting these in the end with a gloss clear coat to finish them off. So, any dullness that starts to form in the paint as it dries will probably be overridden in the end anyway. And now the final pieces that we need to do the first coat of, which is the black sections. And for that, we're going to be using Krylon Black Lacquer. I personally prefer black and white lacquer over black and white paint because it just seems to take better. It adheres better and it finishes better. So I, I will always choose black lacquer over any other black spray paint just for that single reason and of course in true mountain weather fashion it's starting to snow again and it has been probably no more than about five minutes since I started filming the other sections of this okay first lacquer coat is in and done so now I have to get this stuff inside because it looks like it's snowing again love it so once again we're back out for a little bit more of the first coat so just flip them as you can see we're back on the prime side now rather than the painted side so here we go first coat basically done on both sides now so now we have to get these back inside to dry as you can hear the winds picking up a little bit now if we were looking for a more mirrored finish on these what we could have done is we could have used a black primer to begin with which would just give it a deeper finish once the paint goes on but we're not i'm not looking for a mirror finish on it just a shiny metallic finish in this case so the flat gray was just fine so again just a quick second run through on the other side of the black with a black lacquer to get that done the black lacquer usually only needs one coat but i will probably end up giving it a second just for uniformity if i can see any dull spots or if there's any spots that don't have coverage how i would like um but for the most part this will usually be um all that the black will need so we're back again for the next phase which in this case is these are ready for clear coat i'm amazed this is the first time i've used the chrome paint and i have to say the finish on the lightsaber for just one coat is absolutely amazing. So this will probably, I may, looking at this, I may do a second coat anyway, just to, just to clean the edges up a little bit. But these are all, these have all had two coats. These are, these are pretty good where they are. And black lacquer never fails to get the job done. So it's already, it's already ready for its clear coat. And these are gonna be getting a second coat right away because some of them are missing little bits here and there or some of them haven't had the first coat even yet. So let's get on with it because you can hear the weather is starting to fall apart around me again. So for clear coat, I realized I hadn't really updated saying I'm using the Rust-Oleum two times gloss clear. This is basically gonna give me a nice high reflective finish on this. Um, I do a lot of my pieces in matte usually because I feel that matte actually kind of balances the color out a little bit better. But obviously with lightsabers, you need a brighter, shinier finish. So we go with the uh, gloss in this case. If I wanna go for a really high, high shine, I'll obviously go for like the ultra gloss or something like that. But um, in this case, this is where we're going with it and these have just had their clear coat put on so now i'm going to move these to dry 
Okay, so we're on the last stage of the build at this point. As you see, I have the sabers painted and assembled and everything's finished off on them. All I have to do now is just add a little bit of clear coat to them just to finish off the ceiling. And then I have to assemble the base and we have to paint the base quickly. So I'm gonna hit these with a the last dose of clear coat so that they can start drying. So yeah, I'm having to work in my garage today because as you can see, it's snowing outside again, which is the standard story for this time of year here in Pennsylvania. So it's beautiful, don't get me wrong, um, but it'd be nice if I could just finish off what I needed to finish off outside rather than standing in my garage and spray painting this way. So the base has its coat of black lacquer now at this point. I know that it, I know it was already printed in black, so you're probably asking yourself, well, why would you even paint it in black if it was already printed? And the simple reason is that I want to give it a decent finish overall, once it's all said and done. So adding the extra little bit of black lacquer will give it a nice smooth finish as opposed to any uneven sections that you might have got with um, when it was printing. So we'll come back in a little bit when this is dried out and we'll clear coat it. So I'll keep singing the praises of black lacquer and white lacquer paint until the end of time because we get a nice smooth finish from a single coat. It's beautiful coverage on it. So now all we need to do is hit it with a little bit of matte clear coat to finish it off. And I gave the plaque a second coat off camera on the back just so that it's got a uniform covering to it before I start work on that later. So when it comes to starting my projects, I usually like to have a good idea of what pieces I'm gonna be assembling. So that's why I have the baskets in place because that kind of tells me the colors that I'm gonna be working with. In this case, it was pretty simple. It was just black, gold, silver, and the gray, dark silver, whatever you wanted to call it. Now, obviously, as you can probably see as I'm going through this, I had a few issues with my glue, mainly that the glue that I like to use, which is the E6000 Quick Bond, I've not been able to get for a while. For some reason, it's been out of stock damn near everywhere. And I was using a tube that didn't have a lot left to it, so I was having to supplement it with standard E6000, which is still good, but doesn't bond as quickly. But as you can see, there are times when I have tendrils of glue kind of just coming off the edge of the glue pot because of the fact that it's almost out of glue, and it just doesn't really help when I'm trying to do something cleanly. So you'll see me cleaning things up with whatever I can get to hand at the time, which usually tends to be either a pencil or maybe even a nail clipper, because a nail clipper is actually useful for kind of getting in and getting the little tendrils out that are sticking out that you might have missed when you were cleaning the filament up earlier. If it's just like a tiny little piece that's sticking out, it's good to just use those to clean it up again. Now I know that I mentioned this as well as I was going through the initial painting process, but the dark grey for the offhand sabre was a real pain. It was, it took forever to dry. And I mean, it took 12 to 14 hours for that paint to harden enough for me to do a second coat on. I understand it was probably related to the weather, but I just found it strange that that one in particular was a really really long curing time whereas the chrome paint same brand both both rust-oleum were um were a lot quicker in curing so as you can see i'm doing the inserts at this point now which there was a tiny bit of hand painting that went into the inserts just to bring the colors the same and then finally we're going to clean up now and we're going to do the logo and the logo i do quite literally with paint pens because it's just neater to move through and do the colors this way so you'll see the process that I go through here which is usually a couple of coats with the paint pens at least to make sure that I get decent coverage on both things the gold is usually the one that needs more work than the silver to be honest but 
in the end, it always comes out good if you put the time in. But you'll always get a little bit of kind of paint sprinkles. So you'll see me come in at times here as well with a black just to clean up the inserts where we get little bits of paint sprinkling on it because you, d you don't really want those single single parts here and there so again here at this point we're coming in with the gold just to clean up and outline the star wars logo because obviously we want a nice crisp logo all in all for the whole thing and this obviously with it being her sabers that first appeared in star wars rebels we have the rebels logo at the bottom as well which is um going to be brought in in just a second as you'll see me start on that and again in the end we just have to come in with black here and there just to clean it up as you can see just cleaning up the insides of the star wars logo right now and then working on the rebels logo as well and then all in all once this entire process is done I'll take it outside and I'll hit the entire plaque one more time with a coat of clear coat just to seal everything in, just to bring it all together and just make sure that it's ready to go. So here we are with a completed piece ready to go off to the customer. I hope they like it. And if you like this video, please consider giving it a like and uh, maybe give me a comment and maybe uh, subscribe if, if you want to. And until the next time, may the force be with you.